Tropical disturbances still active in the Pacific Ocean on tonight's Tropical Weather Bulletin. And now the latest around the wide world of tropics. Tropical Weather Bulletin for April 26th. The tropics are fairly quiet today with 16 named storms so far this year, or at least tropical storm strength systems. We have the remnants of Sanvu still churning along in the Western Pacific and an area of interest that is just about to begin generating near New Caledonia. In the Atlantic it's 36 days until hurricane season and it's looking quiet there right now with not much going on at all, little gap in the imagery there and over the uh, central United States there's a little storm event going on right now over there as well and you can see some of those clouds there. Where's the action then? Looking down here into the South Pacific, a 30% chance system that we've marked near New Caledonia for a potential tropical or subtropical cyclone to form as it gradually moves south there of New Caledonia and towards New Zealand. It may and is still more likely than not going to remain non-tropical, uh, but we do acknowledge a 30% chance that it could become nameable as a tropical or subtropical cyclone. Elsewhere around the world, or at least there in the southern hemisphere over the Indian Ocean, no areas of interest, but certainly a lot of interesting weather going on there. Lots of cloudiness around the equatorial region of the Indian Ocean, but nothing that's organized or expected to become a tropical cyclone in the next seven days by any means. Let's take a look at some satellite imagery in the last 24 hours and the action's mainly been across Africa again with the highest rain amounts. Those red areas really showing very rapid rain rates that can cause flash flooding and a few other locations across the tropical belt. Uh, South America and across Indonesia, one or two little spots of red there as well depicting very high rainfall amounts. Here's the latest satellite imagery of that western Pacific region, that little blob there that's uh, not far from the sun glint on the right hand side there that's a uh, sanvu the remnants of it and we just zoomed in there a little bit you can see it there slowly moving westwards and it's still got something of a circulation in fact you can see it right there it definitely is a circulation and it did re gain one yesterday uh, but winds haven't been up to par uh, there hasn't been enough convection to sustain a tropical depression and of course it's quite far from the center it's pushed what right over to the east southeast uh, and that's mainly the product of wind shear i would imagine looking at that imagery there and it's really not very organized at all and has no chance of redeveloping as it continues towards the west we expect it will be removed off our charts in the next 24 hours probably there is it is within radar range of guam but obviously the uh, storms on the eastern side there on the far side of that radar scope and so we really can't see anything at all on this radar return. Sea surface temperatures look good in the eastern Pacific. They're still rising, of course, as we prepare for hurricane season, up to around 30 degrees, pushing 31 in a few spots there off the coast of Mexico and Guatemala, although it is quite chilly still out in the open ocean. The Atlantic getting much warmer as well, particularly in those key areas in the loop current and in the Gulf Stream. Temperatures above 26 degrees there in those yellow zones. Indian Ocean is picking up the pace as well. Really warm spot there in the Indian, North Indian Ocean, the Bay of Bengal extremely warm 31 to 32 degrees Celsius Southwest Indian Ocean continues to fall away slowly but Mauritius and La Reunion still holding on to 27 to 28 degrees Celsius waters as is most of the Mozambique Channel the northern part of Madagascar still holding on to some warm waters there as well serious deterioration since cyclone Ilsa the other week off the coast of Western Australia there in the Indian Ocean and temperatures still are going off the boil and uh, still in the South Pacific as well. Temperatures are starting to uh, drop away just a little bit as well. Those hot areas are less hot than they used to be. And we're still looking though at about 30 degrees Celsius around the Solomon Islands and uh, New Caledonia, not New Caledonia, but Fiji to the north of there. In the Western Pacific, water's getting really warm there as well. In the deep tropics, 30 degrees plus, and that is extending quite far northwards now as well. It is above average in the Western Pacific as a general rule. South China Sea is still hit and miss. Eastern Pacific as well is 
over average in the areas near land, but well below average as you go further north up the western coast of North America. The El Nino effect certainly appears to be on its way as we look towards the eastern area there of the Pacific in the equatorial zone where those anomalies are still building. Southern Hemisphere oceanic heat content still holding on to some good amounts there in the deeper tropics but it is starting to drop away a little bit in the coral sea. In the eastern Pacific already a couple of spots there that are really starting to look good, much better than at peak last season on this parameter. And in the western Pacific, the Philippine Sea is certainly a big warm channel there of oceanic heat content that's certainly going to satisfy the needs of any tropical cyclone. GFS 5 days shows the development of this potential system near New Caledonia. It will be a cyclone of some description. The big questions are, will it be tropical in nature? Will it have a wind field that's substantial enough to wrap all the way around? And will it have decent enough convection to be considered a warm core or at least a hybrid system that might get itself a name as it drops down over there towards the Tasman Sea and New Zealand? It will be an interesting watch over the next few days in New Zealand could get some strong winds. New Caledonia probably won't though, it's the southern side of this system as it develops that will have the strong winds and rainfall probably won't be too substantial either for the area. We are expect It's a close call but we are expecting at the moment maybe one to two inches of rainfall for New Caledonia and points southwards of course will get a huge amount of rain more but that's over, over water completely there down to the south of Noumea but uh, in the capital of New Caledonia we are expecting 1.2 inches. That's around uh, 30 millimeters. Uh, quite a lot going on not far from Fiji but on land itself it's uh, a lower number and in the northern tip of New Zealand looking about two inches of rainfall there that's 50 millimeters over the next seven days and possibly a little bit more on the South Island so ironically New Zealand will probably get more rainfall than New Caledonia from this system. In the longer range, there's a couple of things to look at now. In the Indian Ocean, GFS is thinking about a system there that might last for a little while, south of Java, Indonesia, late system, uh, late system cyclone. And another system that forms there off Papua New Guinea and out over the just north of the top end there of Australia, not far from the Indonesian islands, a very low latitude there. But things like that can happen in the late season, and I suppose we'll have to keep monitoring that. It's the first time we've seen that one pop up on the models as well. Continuation of that system moving towards New Zealand there, the one that we have marked. There it is pushing just beyond the South Island is no direct impact. And another system that might end up developing only a very short lived feature that tries to develop towards the end of that loop there but really I don't think there's any hope for that one whatsoever. Just tracking that other system south of New Zealand continues southeastwards towards very high latitudes there uh, and becomes an enormous extra tropical blob as it swirls around and links up with other systems. That's the important stuff done. You can scan the barcode and take a look at the Force 13 merch store where we have all of our usual products, including our full season and individual storm animations on request. And our still waiting for Hone t-shirts are there as well as we wait for that elusive Central Pacific storm. In the Silly Range, there may be something in the offing in the Western Pacific once again. We already had two early season cyclones, one depression and one storm officially. And this is another system that might develop there east of the Mariana Islands and another one that's short-lived as well. Uh, it eventually cuts free of a much larger system there that has two little centers at first, but it's the southern one that becomes more dominant. This is around 8th and 9th of May. It's a little way out and moves towards the northwest towards the northern Mariana Islands, which it does pass through as a weak surface low. Looking towards the South Indian Ocean as well during that period, potentially another tropical cyclone developing. There's a little bit of toing and froing and dancing around with a few little low pressure uh, areas and eventually a cyclone does form, uh, a proper one there. Gradual movement southwards and then southwestwards won't affect land. Again, that's very, very far out on the model runs. So I really wouldn't put much faith into that one at all, as well as that Western Pacific one that we were just looking at. That is why we call it the Silly Range. And you can discuss this as well as anything out there in the wide world of weather, general or tropics. 
discord.gg slash force13 for live chat with over 3,000 weather watchers from around the world. You get to meet all kinds of people there. Well then, on this day, it was in 2020. April 26th saw the birth of Tropical Depression 1E, which was a fascinating storm and the earliest tropical cyclone formation in the Eastern Pacific in at least 500 years of history. Really, really extraordinary to see that one develop. Gradually moved northwestwards. It had one or two distinct periods where it looked pretty good. I'm not sure they even looked its best on the 26th. It may have been earlier than this date, but there it was nonetheless. A remarkable storm that will probably be forgotten quite easily in future, uh, but certainly has uh, a real uh, made a name for itself in that case, even though ironically it didn't have one. Well then. Arlene is the first name in the Atlantic this year, in the Eastern Pacific it's Adrian, and in the Central Pacific we are indeed still looking out for Hone. In the Western Pacific the next name now is Moa, in the North Indian Ocean we are also still looking out for Mocha. We are code unclassified right now, meaning that there's nothing of any seriousness at all for tracking purposes on Force 13, and it's pretty laid back right now. Jasper is the next name in the Australian region, Fabienne in the Southwest Indian Ocean, and Lola in the South Pacific. That's all from tonight's Tropical Weather Bulletin. We'll be back again tomorrow night.